Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Milky King here. Today I'm gonna to do my version of taxi cab confessions, but we're gonna call it golf cart confessions. No, I'm just joking. I'm actually out here because I wanted to come out to the course to do the full review of the Garmin S70. Now, if you've seen my video where I do the comparison between the S62 and the S70, I go into detail about the watch and the comparisons between that and the S62, but I wanted to actually use the watch for a good amount of time in everyday scenarios and on the golf course and be able to come out here and give you my honest, uninfluenced uh, opinion. Now, I bought this watch myself. I paid Dick Sporting Goods $699.99. I think I got to use a $10 reward, so I may have saved just a little bit of cash. But the reason that I do these things is because I'm hoping that I can help you, the viewer, make informed decisions about your golf equipment. And I, if you've seen the channel, if you've watched any of my other videos, um, you've seen probably a version of the video I've done where I talk about the Garmin S62, which is their uh, previous premium smartwatch. And I absolutely love that watch. I use it, I have used it every round in the past two years. I've used it to learn my club distances. I've used it to get better. I've used it to understand where I'm at on the golf course. For a period of time, I actually used it as my full-time smartwatch. And I really have, um, you know, not a lot of bad things to say about it. I think the worst thing is that every once in a while it becomes disconnected from your phone. And so it's difficult to resync. Uh, usually you have to reset it. And, um, you know, the, the screen in the backlight was not ideal. So that brings me to the S70. The S70 just came out a couple weeks ago. It is the new premium offering in the Garmin smartwatch. Uh, our golf smartwatch collection, and it promises a number of things. You know, uh, I won't go into all the details here because, again, I talked about them in my comparison video. I'd love for you to go back and watch it if you haven't. But I wanted to talk about the golf features, the smartwatch features, battery life, overall impressions, and then my recommendation from an average golfer, is this something that you should consider if you're into this golf tech world? There's so many things and so many choices that you can you can make, is this something that would be for you? So before we get into it, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe, hit that like. It goes a long way to help the channel. Here at Bogey King Golf, we do everything from the average golfer's perspective. And you know we are working hard to get better at golf, but we understand that it's a journey, it's a process. And so I'm looking at the perspective of, are these things helpful to you as a golfer? Are they helpful to me as a golfer? And can they really you know make your golf experience better? So. Let's talk about the golf features. Now, the main purpose of this watch, this golf smartwatch, is really to use as a rangefinder. It utilizes GPS in a number of different sensors to understand where you are at a given course. I think it comes preloaded with 43,000 courses on it. So chances are your course is included. Once you start it, it uses the GPS to lock in and it picks up the club you're at and you tell it you wanna keep score and you go through the whole process. And then you use it to keep score you use it to understand your distance, you use it to look at the layout of the hole, and there's also the green layout or undulation map. There's um, probably one of the coolest features is the shot tracking, and then what it does is this virtual caddy. So once you play five full rounds, the watch then tracks all the clubs that you've entered and submitted, and it starts to provide you with suggestions just as if you had a caddy with you saying, hey, I know your game, I know the way you play, this is the shot that you should take here. Now, the Garmin S62 has done that and done a phenomenal job. I have to say the S70 has done uh, an even better job. It starts to give you kind of the average, not only uh, the right club, but it shows you in visual representation the spray that you can expect your club to take when you hit the shot. So that's cool. It has a barometer built in, so it measures air pressure, allows you to get more precise readings. It has a plays like, which is different than the S62. The S62 gave you a front metal back, uh, this actually does give you plays like based on wind, wind conditions and wind direction. Now, it's important to know that you do need to be connected to your smartphone for those features to work. That does get information from your device. Now, one of the things I figured out a couple of days ago is that there are settings within the Garmin Connect app and the Garmin Golf app that you need to make sure location services are turned on and they're always on. So this way when you're in the watch using it for, or you're using the watch for golf, it can connect to your phone and utilize uh, those bits of information. So I noticed on my watch a few days ago that the weather wasn't updating and I realized that my settings were not turned on to always allow. So it was only on when I was actually in and I looking at it myself. So that's something to consider. Um, 
It doesn't defone, like I said, but the cool thing is I've left the phone in my golf cart. I don't like things in my pockets when I play, um, and so I leave it in the cart and it still works fine. Obviously, your cart's never that far away, but most distances away from the cart, uh, even on the green, it still works really well. From the smartwatch perspective, uh, it does notifications, it does fitness tracking, and there's a lot of customization that you can you can do. You can change the watch faces. Um, there's a lot of developers out there that make different watch faces that you can either download for free or you can buy. The smartwatch functionality is great. I mean, I normally use an Apple Watch, and so I am used to a little more uh, interactive abilities. And what I say, what I mean by that is that I can actually answer a phone call and talk on the watch. I can actually type a response or speak a response. You cannot do this on the Garmin S70, which for the price is a little disappointing, I'm not gonna lie. I would expect something that has this level of tech and sophistication to be able to allow to do that. Now you can answer and end calls, you can see your notifications. It does work very seamlessly with the iPhone. I'm an iPhone user. Um, but at the end of the day, I really feel like for the price point, you know, when you're talking $700 for a watch, you're in the Apple Watch Ultra range or the Apple Watch stainless steel space. And so that's kind of my my gauge, um, you know, my comparison. And I can do a lot of that on my Apple Watch and I cannot do that here. Uh, the fitness tracking works fantastically. G you know, Garmin has the corner on GPS in the sports world. Um, super precise, super accurate. The heart rate, the uh, all the information and data is spot on. You get a track of your workout, whether you walk, run, bike, you can customize. I know somebody dropped a comment in my last video asking if you can track weight training, you can track weight training. And you can actually customize the menus on the watch to be specific to the workouts and exercises that you do, which is pretty cool. So I customize mine to have walking, biking, um, and swimming. And so those are things that I enjoy doing. And so you can do that, you customize it however you like. I think that is really cool. The next thing I want to talk about is battery life. That is something that honestly, it blew me away. So I got this, uh, I opened it on Memorial Day. When I got back from a family trip, I looked before I did all this thinking, it had 92% battery. I synced it to my watch. That's something I do want to say is what I recommend is if you get the S70, the S62, any of the Garmin watches, you want to sync it to your phone, but you also want to sync it to your computer. I learned that it doesn't fully update the software. It doesn't get all the downloads, honestly, easily enough until you plug it into your computer. So I'd recommend if you get the watch, you know, get it started up, connect it to your phone, connect it to the golf app, Garmin Connect app, and then plug it into your computer and go through the whole process there. You will not be disappointed. It makes sure all your software is up to date, all your course maps are there. But anyway, battery life. So I opened it up, turned it on. It was a 92% Monday afternoon. I used it for, I counted 45 holes of golf. I played three nine hole rounds in the evenings. I played a full 18 the, uh, yesterday and I used it to work out five times. I, had I changed the settings to be always on. That's the one thing that you uh, I should note in this is that it is not automatically always on. Uh, so if it's not always on, you can get even more battery life. But again, one full week of use, 45 holes of golf, five days of exercise, always on screen, by the time I finished the end of the round yesterday, I had 6% left. And when I took it home, I cleaned it up, I plugged it in, and it only took an hour to charge back to 100%. So from a battery life perspective, that is amazing. Um, from a comparison to like my Apple Watch, my Apple Watch Ultra is the best battery life of an Apple Watch that I've ever had, but that blows that out of the water. If I were to not plug it in, if I were to use it overnight, like I did with the Garmin S70, uh, the Apple Watch would have lasted a day and a half, maybe two days. So that is something that is a big advantage. If you're looking for a smartwatch that has the features and like this beautiful AMOLED screen, um, and it looks like a watch, which I like, and the fact that, you know, and I also, that's one thing I should have mentioned is I, I wore it at night. I let it track my sleep. That was awesome. I really like the detailed sleep tracking, understanding, you know, where my opportunities are and I should go to bed earlier, honestly. as some of the things I learned using this watch the past week. So I've been really impressed with that. So. At the end of the day, is this something that I would recommend to you, my viewers, right? I, I try to bring you guys content. I try to bring you guys golf gear that doesn't break the budget, uh, doesn't you know hurt the wallet, but sometimes there is gear that it may require an investment. And I think that's something that you have to decide for yourself, but I have kind of a couple different considerations that I've written down here, and these are my thoughts. So if you already have a Garmin S62, I will be honest and say, I don't believe it's worth the extra $200. Your S62 will do everything um, for the most part that the S70 will do. The screen is perfectly fine in the sunlight. It's perfectly fine even at night. 
Um, it does shot tracking, it does the virtual caddy, uh, and for the price point of $499.99, I don't know if Garmin's going to reduce the price at all, given that this S70 sits above it, but as of right now, it is still sitting at $499.99. So if you already have an S62, I would just say stick with what you have. You're not you know, gonna miss out on too much. Um, if you have an Apple Watch and the Garmin watch is not going to be your primary everyday device, then I think for $700, stick with the Apple Watch. As I've reviewed other uh, apps for your Apple Watch before on the channel, you can go back and I'll link a video down below. Um, Hello Birdie, uh, there is a number of other apps that you can use that will allow you to use your Apple Watch as your rangefinder. Um, it'll use the you know, shot tracking. There's all kinds of features out there. I think Garmin does it the best, but again, if you have an Apple Watch and you've already invested, I don't think it's worth, in my opinion, this is me, uh, being honest, going out and spending the extra money. Now, if you have neither, and you have an extra 700 bucks, is this a watch? I definitely, yeah, I think so. Uh, it gives you all these amazing features that if you're a someone who's serious about golf and you wanna get better and you wanna improve and you wanna learn about your game, you're not gonna get, in my opinion, a better experience and you're not gonna get a better set of software, analytics, and data than what you get in the Garmin um, S70 and S62. The shot tracking, the virtual caddy, again, as I've progressed as a golfer in the past few years, having that data has been I mean, the game changing because I understand now where, where, how long I hit my irons, how long I hit my wedges, what are my averages, what's my dispersion look like. I'm getting that picture and I know where to work and I've worked on those things. So I think if you really are serious about golf, you cannot put a price on that, honestly. I think having that data at your fingertips is immensely helpful and it's really, really cool. So, you know, the other consideration is, is that there are additional features like the green, I mentioned earlier, the green undulation reading. If you want that, you do have to pay for the Garmin uh, Golf Membership. It is $9.99 per month, or it's $100 for the year. That's another consideration. So again, you're gonna spend $700, and then you're going to have to pay $100 for the subscription, or $10 a month, whatever you know you decide to choose. Now, the uh, other thing that somebody brought up in a previous comment on the video, the, on the comparison, is they said, well, why would you, you know, invest in a Garmin watch that you couldn't trade up another time? Now, Apple has different programs for like phone trade-ins and stuff. As far as I'm aware, they don't have programs with the Apple Watch, but I did some research. This was just, you know, I think it was as of yesterday. So right now, if I were to go on eBay, I could find a used Garmin S62 for somewhere in the market of like 250 to 350. That's based on what I saw, again, as of the filming of this video. Um, brand new, again, 500, used 250 to 350. If I look at an Apple Watch that was, say, an Apple Watch 7, which cost 400 to 500 brand new, same ballpark, is selling for 250 to 350 right now on eBay. So when I look at, like, if you were to upgrade and, like, trade, not trade it, but sell it, you know, there's still a little bit of money to be made. Um, if you took good care of it, it's in good shape. You can take that money and put it into the S70. You know, again, I don't think... Garmin's end game is to have you upgrade every year. The S62 has been out for, I, mean, I think, at least two years, if not longer, and they haven't put anything out above it because I think they plan on people buying these watches and they stick with them and you wear them. It is a, a you know, a statement piece. It's a fashion piece. Um, it's also a functional piece. And so, again, from a Bogey King perspective, you know, the average golfer, if you are somebody who wants to get better and who is serious and you have the extra money, then I say it's definitely a recommendation from my perspective. If you have an S62, continue to use that. You're not gonna miss out. The screen does look great, the AMOLED screen, but it's not worth an extra $200. Battery life, both are phenomenal. Both blow the Apple Watch out of the water. Um, at the end of the day, you have to make the decision what's best for you. I definitely think any kind of tech that can give you an insight, give you an edge, give you that data that helps you grow your game, I'd recommend. And so, you know, that's really my thoughts. Again, I bought this myself not Garmin sponsored, didn't get a device to test. I've been doing this on my own because I really care about uh, you guys and hopefully helping you out. I love technology and gadgets and gizmos and that's always been me and so it's cool that I can combine that love and that passion and the love of golf. So, you know, I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, hit that thumbs up, drop a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Um, a lot of you have already commented, which has been great listening and seeing uh, what you guys have to say. I love it. So please comment, let me know what you're thinking, what you might do if you're gonna get one. Um, as of the filming of this video, Garmin's website has a two to three week backlog or back order. Um, the watch is no longer available on Dix or Golf Galaxy, so I'm guessing they sold out and they're waiting on more stock. Just like anything too, one of my other recommendations, and then I'll end the video, is don't go to eBay and buy one and pay more for it. 
The German R10 was an example of, I managed to get that early. I really liked that device, I did a review. But people were selling it on eBay for three, four, 500 bucks above market price. And then literally two months later, they came out and they had plenty of stock and you could buy it for the regular price. It's the same thing here. I do not urge you to go out to eBay and try to find one and spend 300 bucks more than what it's actually cost. Wait, just wait and you'll get one. Or go get an S62 um, or any of the other Garmin watches. They all do great things and they're all really, you know, functional. So again, we appreciate your sticking with me. I know this is kind of a long video, but I wanted to give you a lot of information. I've done a lot of research over the past week, and I really have to say, I do like the device. I would recommend it. Again, it is a higher price point, but I do think they pack a lot into it for that price. And so, um, yeah, we hope that this is helpful. We hope that you are getting out and playing golf this year and getting better and enjoying it. And uh, as we say here at Bogey King Golf, every video, you can still have fun even when you're playing plus one. So until next video, get out, play some golf, and we'll see you next time. All right, everyone, later.